you're a constant. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, it is, it is, yeah, I was saying that um, God is, 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 um, God is always at work. And uh, Georgette, thank you. You're very expectant for what he's going to say. But as we wait on him every morning, you know, the Bible says that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run with wings as eagles. They shall walk and they shall not faint. They shall run and they shall not grow weary. So as we wait on the Lord every morning, we already have um, his promises that um, we are not going to faint. We are not going to grow weary. And uh, so we trust that God indeed is at work in each and every one of our lives. So let's um, let's get out of our beds. Let's do this thing. If you know that um, you have a tendency to fall asleep again, put yourself in a vantage position where you can actually make the most of this hour. Uh, one of the things that God has been convicting me for, of is the quality of, of my sacrifices and whether I'm giving him my very best. And, um, you know, in the Old Testament, uh, God always had issue with the, when worshippers would bring lame ducks, you know, and uh, <laughs> lame animals and blemished lambs for sacrifice instead of you know bringing the best of their flock so you know one of the things god has been convicting me of personally is the quality of my sacrifices and so if i choose to pray in the morning what am i do am i doing it wholeheartedly am i doing it you know um as if but not quite you know what what's the quality of my of my if i've said that i'm sacrificing this hour to God. And, and I recently, you know, I was drawn to when Jesus would draw away um, in, uh, to go and pray in the morning, which is where this example comes from as well, that Jesus would draw away um, to go and pray. And what was the quality of his time that he would spend with God? And so, you know, if we're to be imitators of Jesus, it would be a good example. And of course, there's a time we know that he would he came, kept coming back and looking at his disciples and they were half asleep and like, guys, could you not even watch for one hour? So let us be um, uh, convicted of the same, that we give God of the very best. <laughs> we give God of the very best. Amen. Amen. So I'm excited as always um, to, uh, to be part of this and to lead us. Uh, in prayer as, as, as God would lead. So as we are excited uh, about what God is going to say, let's um, uh, remember that we can always go back to, uh, to YouTube and, uh, and watch this and catch up with this as well later during the day. I found that when I do that, it's actually very powerful. It's, it's amazing when you do that. You know, when you're part of this call, you don't quite know how strong um, the presence of God is because you're in the room with us. Um, but when you go back later and you, you know, take another hour just to pray, it's amazing just the tangible presence of God in this room. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Never take this moment for granted. And one day you're going to look back and say, wow. That was awesome. So welcome, Rachel A. Welcome, Margaret. Uh, Rosabella. Uh, Rosabella, your testimony the other day was awesome. God is so great. Morning, Lilia. Morning, Miriam Nachito. And I can see there are some people who are still trying to connect. So we're going to get into our, into our session. And this is Awaken Morning Glory. We awaken the morning with our praise and with our worship and with our sacrifices to God. This is the time where our hearts are ready, are open to give to God, but also to receive from him at this time. So may he be glorified in this moment in these moments that we have 
before him and as a fellowship of believers and of people who gather to pray. May God be glorified this morning. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We thank you so much for the believers that you gather for this morning glory from across the city, even from across borders. We thank you, God, because you have created us to worship you. You have created us, oh God, to offer sacrifices unto you. And so I pray that you would be pleased with our sacrifices this morning. But above all, we thank you because you hear us when we call. And when we hear and ask anything in your name, you will do it. And so be glorified in this moment. Be glorified in everything that we're going to share, Father. Let your presence be evident to all even to those who are not particularly in this room but who are watching on youtube and may we always remember that you have called us father to pray and indeed you've said in your word my house shall be called a house of prayer so be glorified in this moment in jesus name and everybody said amen and amen glory 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 Hallelujah. I'm very excited about this morning and I hope you are too. So we're, 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 we're starting as usual with our, you know, giving our praise and our worship to God. Every time we wake up in the morning, guys, we've, we've got to, we've got to thank God. We've got to worship him. We've got to give him praise because, you know, a lot goes on in the night. A lot goes on in the night as we are sleeping. Um, a lot goes on in the night as we are sleeping. The enemy prowls. It doesn't mean he doesn't prowl during the day, but those who know the world of the spirit know that um, it is very a spirit world is very active at night. So when you wake up in the morning, and 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 you 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 can open your eyes, it is definitely a moment for us to 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 give uh, praise and worship to God. So we worship God with our thanksgiving, we worship him with our praise, with our hands lifted up, our voice lifted up, our mouth filled with praise, our heart totally focused on him who is worthy of all glory, all honor, and all praise. And so today, uh, 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 our scripture comes from the book of Exodus and 15. And this is after the Israelites had come through um, the crossing of the river uh, the Red Sea, rather, and God had totally an annihilated um, the uh, Pharaoh's army, and these guys had crossed on dry land, and the waters had gone back and covered, and so this was a song that they sang um, after 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 they came through. It's a song of Maria, Miriam, rather, and so um, I felt it was an important one, and again one of the things that I've been thinking about of late is, so we fasted 21 days. Some of us uh, fasted 40 days. Others, you know, um, are still fasting. Perhaps I'm not sure. The question is, you know, after that experience and, you know, what is it that we're believing God for? And what, not just, you know, the daily things, but were any of us believing God for big things? And, and and has he done those big things? Is he, is he in the process of doing those things? Apart from the usual good things that we trust God for, but what were we believing God for? And where are we at in that stage? Have we forgotten that, you know, perhaps those are the things we're asking for? So even as the Israelites came through, this was a massive moment in the nation of Israel. It was a moment of deliverance. So some of us have been delivered of amazing things you know in this season some of us are in the process of being delivered some of us are still hoping that that deliverance that moment of deliverance is going to come whether for ourselves or for our family members or for our friends or whatever it is that we are believing god for and so i this is a moment where the israelites had come through this great moment of deliverance and of course there was a great journey ahead of them with hindsight, we can see that they still had 40 years ahead of them in the wilderness. But at that moment, they took the time to praise God. Um, so it wasn't that they were yet in the promised land, but he had brought them through a great delivery. So it's, it's important for us. Sometimes we may not yet be where we want to be, 
but it is important, I feel, that we always take moments for the, to, to, to praise God, even for small moves, even for, 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 for small steps, even for big steps, even before we get there, that is important for us to bless and magnify the name of the Lord. So we're reading from Exodus 15 and some selected verses there. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has held both horse and rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. Ha! The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. Your right hand, O oh Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, smashes the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow those who rise against you. You unleash your blazing fury. It consumes them like straw. Who is like you among the gods, O oh Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders? You raised your right hand and the earth swallowed our enemies. You know, even if we were to get just one verse here, you know, we could worship God for our whole day. The Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name. I just want us this morning to consider the Lord as a warrior. You know, many times we, you know, we, we, we focus on many aspects of God, you know, his beauty, his splendor. This morning, just think of a warrior, you know, a warrior. The Lord is a warrior. That means he's, he, 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 he goes out to fight. He goes out to fight battles. And when he's fighting these battles for the sake of his name, like for the sake for the Israelites, it was for the sake of his name. You know, he does it for the sake of his name, but he does it for us. That is why, you know, there's a, the scripture says, stand still, you know, stand still. The Lord will fight your battles. Stand still. Why do we stand still? Because the Lord is a warrior. He is a warrior. You know, one of the famous films in our recent past, you know, was Black Panther. And everybody was, you know, like, you know, praising these African warriors and how they stood up. But, you know, that was a film. But, you know, let us consider the Lord is a warrior. Yahweh is his name, you know. Your right hand, O oh Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O oh Lord, smashes the enemy. Hey, smashes the enemy. You know, he overthrows our enemies. He unleashes his fury and it consumes our enemies like straw. When he raises his right hand, the earth just swallows those who come against us. You know, many times, we think maybe we don't know just how many things God saves us from. When you read the Bible, God saves us from so many things because the enemy prowls like a lion, looking for whom he may devour, you know. And of late, when we hear of many failings of men and women of God, you're like, this enemy is for real. And all of us must be on our guard, especially when we've come through personal failures ourselves. We look back and say, my God, the enemy set me up and I fell for this hook, line and sinker. But thanks be to God who has brought me out of this. Let us thank God when we come out of the enemy's camp. And though our clothes may be smelling of fire, but but you know the bible says the righteous man falls seven times but he gets up each time so this morning we are praising god who is a warrior yahweh is his name hallelujah so let's just take moments i don't know what god has brought you through i don't know what you're going through right now but trust me each and every one of us has enemies that the lord has saved us from I'm not talking just physical enemies. I'm talking spiritual enemies. I'm talking demons that are unleashed against us so that God's purpose is, in our lives is not fulfilled. I'm talking about things that are held against our 
families so that we are caught in vicious cycles. Whatever it is, we to this morning we are praising God because He is a warrior and His right hand, Banange, it's the one that achieves victory for us against those things that we see and against those things that we don't see. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord is a warrior. So let us praise and worship him this morning. Hallelujah, Father. We take this time to lift up our voices and join in this song of Mariam, Miriam. And we just want to say, Lord, you're excellent in all your ways. You are wonderful, oh God. We sing to you this morning because you have triumphed gloriously in our lives, almighty God. You, are tri you have triumphed gloriously. We are more than conquerors through Christ who died for us, who achieved great victories for us at the cross. We are more than conquerors and we have triumphed gloriously in you, in the mighty name of Jesus, because you have overcome for us, O oh Lord, those who are too strong for us, even enemies that we do not see, O oh God, perilous enemies of death that have been sent against us, O oh God. And see how you preserved even uh, Rose Bella's husband last week, Father. If that was not the enemy of death that you swallowed up, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are our strength and our song, and you have given us the victory. And this morning, we just want to say hallelujah, hallelujah, because we will sing unto you because you've given us the victory. You are our God, and we will praise you. We will exalt you, oh God, because you are a warrior. You are a victorious warrior. You are the one who overcomes for us. You do battle for us. And you stand still and see our salvation. Stand still and see our salvation. Yahweh is your name. Yahweh is your name. Yahweh is your name. Yara baka shandi ribeke yorbo shandi ribeke yara ba boko she bara maka shandi ribe. Father, we thank you because the enemy, <laughs> even here, the enemy ori baka shandi riba yobo ko shindi riba. Even here, the enemy, Lord, ay 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 ay. Ha, ah, Father, we thank you because you are removing even the enemy from this room right now. Saints, we have been hacked, but we thank God because all things are possible. And even here, God is triumphing, victorious over us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because this person is being removed from the room. Host, please remove uh, this hacker from the room in the mighty name of Jesus. We send fire, fire, fire. We thank you, God, because this is a holy ground and we will not bow to the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. And we command every voice of the enemy to be shut right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so we continue undisturbed in Jesus' name because our God is a warrior. Our God is a warrior. This is holy ground. Who is like you, Father? Unleash your blazing fury even now against who mean people who take the time to come into a Zoom room at this time. Father, if that is not the enemy, what is it? So may you unleash your blazing fury even now and consume them like straw. In the mighty name of Jesus, consume them like straw. Every weapon that is fashioned against this community, Father, it does not prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow those who rise against you. Therefore, every plan, Father, 
against this community. Father is overthrown in the mighty name of Jesus. And this community grows and spreads to the left and to the right, across borders, across nations, in the mighty name of Jesus. You're awesome in splendor. You perform great wonders. You're glorious in holiness. You raise your right hand, O God, and the earth swallows our enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. You are a warrior, O God, and Yahweh is your name. You are a warrior, O God, and Yahweh is your name. Glorious, glorious, glorious is your name, O God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, God, because you who is on our side is greater than he who is against us. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So today we are, <laughs> God is good. Uh, we are talking about obedience. Um, we are talking about obedience. Uh, we are talking about obedience. And again, um, thanking God for, 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 for this is um, morning glory. And uh, it, is a, it is a moment of sacrifice. And one of the things that God has been challenging me is uh, whenever, um, when the Israelites, when we look at people, when there were moments of fasting, when people fasted in the Bible, after that, there was always something that God called the people to do. Um, if we look at Esther, when she had a three-day fast, if we, look at, um, if we look at Daniel, when he had his 21-day fast, if we look at Jesus and the 40 days he spent in the wilderness, if we look at Moses and the 40 days he spent in the wilderness with God, it was never a fast for the sake of a fast. It was never a fast, uh, you know, just because it was a trendy thing to do. It was a fast and out of that, there was a great responsibility that fell on those who fasted as God had commanded. And so I would like us not to forget very quickly that we did a 21 day fast, we did a 40 day fast, perhaps some of us are still fasting as part of the Lent period. Bottom line is, what is God saying to us individually? What is God saying to us corporately? What is God requiring of us? What did he speak to us in the fast as we prayed and had different prayer points every day? What did God tell us? What did he ask us to do as we surrendered our all to him, as we surrendered the year to him, as we surrendered our lives and our hearts to him? What did he tell us to do? What, what instructions did he give us? What are those things that we noted down and said, oh God, I need to do this. Oh God, you're asking me to do this. Oh God, you're asking me to talk to this person. Oh God, you're asking me to do this. Oh God, you're asking me to... Uh, give up this. Oh God, you're telling me to do this. What are those things that God told us? I pray that he actually did speak to us. Did he say something about your service to him? Did he ask you to serve somewhere? Did he ask you to reach out to somebody? And so the question which I've been battling with, and which is why I'm sharing, because this is a subject that I'm close to right now is, so when he spoke, what did we do? Have we done? Are we thinking of doing? Are we still procrastinating? Where are we at? So this morning, uh, that is our focus on, 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 that's what I want us to focus on. And that's what I want us to, to, to pray about. And so we're, we're looking at the book of Samuel, first Samuel and chapter 15. And, um, Perhaps you have your Bibles um, with you, or perhaps you you know um, the story. So we're just gonna go it through. Uh, we're just gonna go through it um, quite quickly, um, and then just on on our key verses. And um, so what happened is that um, Saul 
um, was uh, getting ready uh, to go. He, there was battle, uh, the Amalekites. And uh, the instruction through Samuel the prophet was that Saul was supposed to go and um, punish Amalek on behalf of God, obviously, punish Amalek. Uh, and he was supposed to go and strike the Amalekites completely and destroy everything. God's command was that he was not going to spare uh, the king was going to put to death man, woman, child, animals, everything. And so Saul obviously goes out um, to defeat the Amalekites. God had already said, I'm going to de destroy them. So the battle was already assured. But then what Saul does is that he captures the king and then he spares the best of the sheep, the oxen, the lap animals, and all that was good. And they didn't destroy them utterly. They only destroyed the things that were worthless. And so Samuel, God says, tell Samuel, you know, you go and uh, check this guy out because he has not um, done what uh, I told him to do. So Samuel gets there and he's like, dude, why am I hearing bleating of sheep? And animals, what's up? And uh, Saul says, you know, yeah, we brought these things up, but we spared the best of the sheep to sacrifice to the Lord. At this point, he says, the Lord, your God, but the rest you have utterly destroyed. Um, and so Samuel says, you know, okay, wait, I will hear what God is going to tell you. And... Um, so he comes back and he says, look, the Lord sent you on a mission. And he says, go and destroy the Amalekites and fight against them until they're exterminated. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord, but you rushed upon the spoil and did what was evil? And so he says, but I obeyed, by the way. I went on the mission that God told me, but I, you know, kept some of the things to sacrifice to the Lord, your God. And then in verse 22, which is where we are at for our verse today, Samuel tells him, has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubborn is as, stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. So we see that from this, you know, we, we, can, we can say a lot, but in, 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 in the important thing here is Saul did not obey God completely. God gave him a mission. He did the mission in his own way and thought in his own way, God has told me to do this, but maybe he didn't mean this so I can still do this and he will still be pleased with whatever. And God didn't want the animals. He didn't want the sacrifices. He wanted complete obedience. And so I have been challenged over the past two weeks or so because it's the voice that just keeps every message I'm here is obedience is better than sacrifice. Are we walking in complete obedience to God or are we fashioning how we think we should obey God. Are we, has he told us to do something? And then you're like, okay, God, I'm doing it this way. Perhaps I'm doing it this way. And, you know, I'm doing it like this. So yeah, it should be okay. You told me to pray three times a day, but I'm doing the one. So, you know, okay, that, that's okay. You told me to keep fasting. But Lord, I did 40 days. Okay, isn't that okay? You know, so we're, 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 we, are, we are finding our own ways of obeying and fulfilling our individual commands or whatever God has asked us to do. So this verse is really for all of us as, as believers that um, God requires obedience of us. He requires obedience and not uh sacrifice um he requires us to walk in obedience to him at all times and doing what he has told us to do and it may be something small it may be something as small as 
by the way, talk to that person. By the way, stop here, do this here, do that there. It, it could be something really small. And every time you walk past that person, you feel that tugging on your heart, your, the Holy Spirit reminding you, I asked you to do this, I asked you to do this. And you know, eventually when we, when we shut that voice out long enough, eventually we don't hear it anymore. <laughs> We, he, he stops, you know, he stops. And I've really been convicted of late about our bodies being the temple of the Holy Spirit and how significant that is that we carry, we carry the Holy Spirit. So when we grieve him, I think there was a time Georgette possibly was praying about this. I can't remember if it was Georgette, about how when we grieve the Holy Spirit, what a terrible thing that would be. And so we, when we walk in partial obedience or in disobedience to God, it's, it is not something for us to be commended for. And so why? Because God requires us to obey him, but also because when we don't obey him, it's like we're rebelling against him. And it says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And you're like, ah, really? That's a bit much, God. That's a bit much. <laughs> but this is the word of God. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Have you ever, those of us who are parents, you know what it is when you keep telling your child um, to do something and they don't do it. And so um, because they don't do it, you keep telling them, you know, do this, do this. How many times am I going to tell you to clean your room? Clean your room. How many times am I going to tell you to pick your, to pick up this? Do it. You know, and as the children grow older, they become teenagers, you know, you keep repeating the commands and do, oh, and you, you know, you can talk yourself hoarse and they just don't do it. And they're like, oh my goodness. But now just think about that. How we are before God. Because stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. It just means like, you know, yeah, I hear you, but I'm just not going to do it. So it's, it's food for thought for us. Second John 1, 6 says, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his command. So how do we show that we love God? By obeying him and by walking in his commands. And for each and every one of us, there are standard commands that God has given us in his word. But because each of us has a unique call on our lives, at the same time, there is a unique command, the unique commands that God gives us on a daily basis because we each have different lives, different patterns, different everything. And so there are those different things that God would tell us to do. And we're supposed to walk in obedience to his commands. And sometimes, they're small, they're small, and yet they make a difference. Sometimes it's a word of blessing for somebody and we say, aha, but God, really? Are you the one who has told me this? Or is it me? Is it, you know? And so this morning, I want us to ask God to examine our hearts. Where are we falling short on what God has told us to do? And forgive the spelling error there. We need to repent and ask God, to forgive us for any failures. And, and so that's going to be our, 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 our moment of praise, I mean, of prayer today. And, and as the Holy Spirit examines our hearts, each and every one, we know where we are. We know where we are. We know those things that we said we're going to do the other year. We still haven't done them. Um, and, and, and so um, it's, it's, it's good for us this morning. God has called us to do things. God, some of us who are leaders in church, um, pastors even, God, there are certain things God has called us to do. We haven't yet done them. Why? <laughs> some of us in our families, there are things God has called us to do. Start that prayer time in your family. Um, tell this to your dad or tell this to your workmates or pray for this workmate. Go visit this person. We haven't done it. Why? And so this is a time for us to
to ask the Lord to examine our hearts. Holy Spirit, you are the one who knows us even more than we know ourselves. And right now we present ourselves to you and we ask that you would examine us. Examine our hearts and show us those things that remind us even things of old that you've told us to do, that we said we're going to do, but we haven't done them. This morning, oh God, we present ourselves as a community of believers and we ask, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would examine our hearts, examine our hearts and show us where we have fallen short because clearly you've called us to walk in obedience. And this morning, even as you examine us, oh God, may you forgive us, oh Lord. Forgive us any areas of disobedience, areas of partial obedience, things you have told us to do and you've spoken so clearly, and yet we have failed to do them for one reason or another. This morning, we present ourselves to you, oh God, and we ask, oh Lord, that you'd have mercy on us because indeed rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Father, have mercy on us this morning and may we make a point, oh God, as you remind us of these things. Holy Spirit, do your work now in your children right now. Everybody who is listening, who is in this prayer room, who is on YouTube, who is gonna watch this later, they are those areas. Holy Spirit, Light up our hearts right now and just speak to us and continue to remind us of these things throughout the day, throughout the week, that we may be careful to do as you have commanded. Have your way in us, Holy Spirit, for indeed obedience is better than sacrifice. We may give everything of ourselves, but if we're falling short in the areas that God has commanded us, then our sacrifice falls short. We may be giving of our money. We may be giving of our time. We may heed every call. We may go to church every Sunday. But you know what? If there are areas in our lives where God has given us strict commands and we are falling short, then I want us to remember that obedience is better than sacrifice. We may do everything by the book and be religious about everything, our tithes, our offerings, the sacrifices. But if we're not doing as God has told us to do, perhaps God, who says that God, that we have to do things every single way? I mean, every single, the same way every single time. Maybe God has said, no, I want us to do things differently, but we are not heeding the command. May God help us even as he examines us today. And there are examples that I, you know, I was drawn to a few weeks ago um, as I was studying my Bible. Mary or Moses. You know, when Mary, when the angel appeared to Mary um, and said, you know, you're going to, in the, look, the book of Luke, you're going to behold, uh, oh favor, you know, you, you're going to conceive and bear a child. In the book of Luke chapter one, when the angel appeared, you know, yes, uh, Mary, you know, had a question or two, she, you know, how, how can this be? Because I'm a virgin. And, uh, you know, the angel answered her. And, uh, and you know, in verse 38, she said, um, you know, behold, I am the Lord's servant. May it be done according to your will. And the angel went. And that was it. You know, it was uh, uh, an interaction which was like, boom, okay. How is it going to be? This is how it's going to be. Boom, let it be done. And the angel went. Then in contrast, we have Moses, um, who was also called of the Lord, who also got a visitation from the Lord, the burning bush, and the Lord called him, 
Uh, and I, I encourage you to go back in the book of Exodus chapter three and chapter four, and I just picked out some verses. So when finally, you know, after that interaction, uh, Moses already had the calling of God on his life. He'd just gone to the world, you know, uh, escaped from Pharaoh's place, but he knew he had a calling to deliver his people Israel. Even though he spent 40 years out, you know, he came back when he was 80, and now this time, you know, the confident Moses of the 40-year-old Moses versus the 80-year-old Moses, you know, it was a big difference because now he, when God tells him, this is what I'm asking you to do, verse 11, but then he says to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? Verse 13, now they may say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And then in chapter four and verse one, then Moses said, what if they will not believe me or listen to what I say? For they will say, the Lord has not appeared to you. Verse 10, then Moses said to the Lord, please, Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither recently, nor in that time past, nor since you have spoken to your servant, for I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Verse 13, but he's finally, you know, when he's run out of excuses, he says, okay, Lord, now you send somebody else. Please don't even send me. You send, because for every time he would come up with an excuse, God will say, God would come up with, a, with an answer. Who am I? I am who I am. Tell them I am has sent you. What shall I say to them? I am God. What if they don't believe me? Then he tells him to pull out his stuff. I, you know, please, Lord, I have never been eloquent. Not today, not in the time past, not even since you started speaking to me. You know, he had reasons. And then finally he says, okay, God, please send somebody else, not me. And, you know, the next verse 14, it says, and the Lord's anger burned against Moses. Now, of course, we know that Moses and God enjoyed such a great relationship. Moses communed with God. But we must not forget that it came out of, eventually it was Aaron who, who would do the speaking and Moses who would do the acting. I mean, do some of the things, but Aaron, God then said, okay, let Aaron speak, you know, for you. Okay, boom, you know, I've called you, but you know, so he was a leader, but he was reluctant. He was reluctant and the Lord's anger burned against him right there. And we also know that, you know, because of some of these things, uh, Moses's actions and whatever, he actually did not enter the promised land. God just showed it to him, but he never entered the promised land. So, um, the important thing is, you know, by God's grace, they still worked together. But so it's, it's, so are we going to be a Mary or a Moses? And I know it's very easy for us to, Moses is more in where we are inclined. <clears throat> when God says, go do this, do we respond? It's okay to, you know, to ask God a few questions like the way Mary asked, but do we then keep coming up with excuse, Lord, who am I? What am I going to say? What if they don't believe me? Lord, I'm not the one, send somebody else. So it's this morning, I really wanted the, us to be challenged by God. Are we going to be a Mary? Are we going to be a Moses? Yes, we may be reluctant. By God's grace, he will work his way in us and transform us and change us. But we have the examples of these people in the Bible to learn from. Are we going to be a Mary or are we going to be a Moses? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your grace. We thank you because you do not deal with us according to our weaknesses, according to our frailties. You are mindful, Lord, that we are but dust. We are mindful that we are man. You're mindful, oh God, of us and our frailties. And by your grace, you take all of this into consideration. I thank you, Father, because for each and every one of us, you've given an assignment. You've told us to do things. And I pray, Father, this morning, even as you continue to examine us, that we will respond like Mary and say, we are your servants. Let it be done according to your word. And to trust you and have faith, oh God, that you who has called us is faithful to complete the work that you've entrusted us to do. That would remember, almighty God, that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. And that if you've called us, oh God, it means that you've made a way for us already. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, even as we examine and we look at the Bible, 
we see that God had already made plans for the nation of Israel. All Moses had to do was walk in that. He, you, he was already, you were already going to do things, oh God, because you knew what lay ahead. So even for us, oh God, you have called us and you already know what lies ahead and you have already made a way, Father, in the wilderness. You've already made a way out and all you want is for us as your chosen vessels to say, here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord, here I am. Send me, here I am to do what you've asked me to do, oh God, because you've already accomplished You've already sent your word ahead. By the time you have called us, oh God, you've already sent your word ahead. By the time you, 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 you chose Mary as a vessel to carry Jesus, you had already laid the plan for the life of Jesus and the life he was going to live. You had already worked it out. And so, Father, I pray this morning, would remember that if you've called us to do things, oh God, you've already worked it out to its very end. You're just looking for a vessel to walk in obedience to you. And so, Father, this morning, in the name of Jesus, I pray that we would yield to the call, to the call, to the call, to the call on our lives, and that we would respond and would say, yes, Lord, here I am. May it be done to me according to your word. A Father, in the name of Jesus right now, I pray, oh God, that would fear you more than we fear men. We see the mistake that Saul made, that he gave in to the people and he feared the people. And so the people kept the best animals for themselves in the guise of we're going to sacrifice them to God. That would not fear. What are people going to say? What if they don't believe us? But we would trust you, oh God, that if you've called us, oh God, that you're faithful. You are faithful because the Bible says that you who called us is faithful. And so, Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I know that you're at work in our hearts and there are things, oh God, I pray for the one who is reluctant, Father, even now. And I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you'd speak, Father, and make your plans clear and make your plans known in the mighty name of Jesus that would trust you. Because you who called us is faithful. Father, right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I know that we did not just fast 21 days and 40 days just to go back to business as usual. Father, no, you spoke to us clearly, oh God. And there is a mandate on each and every person in this room, oh God. There is a mandate. There is an assignment, oh God. However small it may be in our eyes. It may be the old woman down the road. It may be the young child in the village. Father, there is an assignment and I pray this day, Father, in the name of Jesus, that we would walk in obedience, that we would not be reluctant, oh God, fearing what other people are going to think. But Father, we'll know that you who called us is faithful. And what do you require of us, oh God, than to obey and walk in your commands? And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because your word has gone out. And I pray that our response would be, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, here I am. We are your humble servants. Let it be done unto us according to your word. And so this morning, whatever the call is, will you respond by saying yes? God desires us to walk in obedience. God desires us to be walk in obedience. Are you a pastor on score? Are you a prophet, a teacher of the word on this call? Are you a minister in any capacity? It is even stronger on us that we walk in obedience to the Lord. May God help us as we meditate on this word today that we walk in obedience. Perhaps God has said even the way we are doing our Sunday services 
It's not the way he wants. Maybe there's a Sunday he said, it's okay, guys. Today, I just want us to pray all day. May we heed the voice of the Lord. May we heed the voice of the Lord. And all God's people said, amen. And amen. And amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. 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 Perhaps in uh, two minutes, um, you can put in the chat, uh, put in the chat, uh, I, I really want to allow the Holy Spirit to move. I don't want to do his work this morning. In the chat, if there's anybody who has a particular area, you know you, you want us to pray, just put it in the chat and let us pray. There's something that you know God has told you to do. I'm asking you to put it in the chat so that we can pray with you in two minutes. Uh, before we close, please put it in the chat and uh, let's pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank mm. you. I thank you. Mm. I thank you. And I bless you because you're mm. awesome in all your ways. Hallelujah. Mm. I don't see anything coming up in the chat. So we are going to, um, we are going to um, uh, close off with our final charge, which comes from the book of Psalm. And verse one to three. So if you don't mind unmuting your microphones, um, mm. believing that there are no hackers in the room with us right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's uh, join in the words of uh, the final charge. Mm. Are we there? Yes. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> it is awfully quiet today. <laughs> I'm believing that it is because God is at work. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Susan, there are two people who had uh, put two prayer requests on the chat. Um, we have Kathy and, and Claire, oh, and Robin. Eh? Okay. Oh, four people now. Mm. Okay, I don't know. I can't see the chat. Um, ah, okay. Right. Amen. Okay. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for Kathy as she waits on the promises as guided during the fast. I pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would stick to your word because uh, the, the promises are for a, a, an appointed time and they are going to come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. So I pray that Kathy would remain strong in you and strong in your word because surely that time is coming for those promises to be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for Claire right now, almighty God. Father, we pray for a harvest of souls in her family right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to pray, mm. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you're sending your word, Father. And Father, her siblings, her, her, her relatives, her uncles, her cousins, Father, we are praying for the harvest, almighty God. Go ahead, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, convicting of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment in Jesus' mighty name. For Robin, her father, for her workplace, Father, I pray that she will be her light, the light in her workplace, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will instruct her, Father, on specific things, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that she needs to do in her workplace, Father. And Father, for Evelyn, who wants to introduce prayer time in her family, amen. Father, we thank you, almighty God, because she's walking in obedience and she's going to start one day. She's going to start even today by calling even just one person. And Father, that prayer altar is going to be established in her home as she walks in obedience to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for the mission of community, Father, in Bukoto. That is uh, Evelyn is part of, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, not by might, not by power, not by the Holy, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, Almighty God, that they're going to walk in obedience, Father, and do what you're telling them to do, Father, in transforming Bukoto, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. It is you, and I pray that they'll do things your way because it is you who has called them in the mighty name name of jesus thank you father and all god's people said amen so let's amen. unmute uh, let's unmute uh, for our final charge hallelujah 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 blessed am i
Glory, 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 glory. I thank you so much for joining us this morning. God is good all the time. May you have a glorious day as we meditate on his word, as we meditate on obedience. May we walk in obedience to God, well knowing that his right arm has swallowed our enemies. In Jesus' mighty name and all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Susan. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Susan. Bless you, Susan. Bless you all. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Bless you.